Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 1 series. Jesus gives a revision of previous days, filmed on the 15th of July 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. Well, Mary's just uh, given you some additional homework first, so you might want to just take note of that. Discover why you haven't already been engaging the emotional process of challenging addictions. And what is the cause of your current resistance? So just give you a bit of time to note that down. And then I'm going to scrub the entire board. So. Okay. Well, I'm not going to get stuck into our uh, presentation this morning straight away because I want to do a little bit of revision with you. And I also want to let you know about things that we can easily observe, but you are often not observing yourself. Does that make sense? So let's, uh, let's do that. Do you remember the first day? What did we talk about the first day? We have the roving mics too, so Sue and then Paige, was it, who had her hand up? Yep. Will, truth and time. Right, so that was about, the main theme though was a desire, was to measure your desire, wasn't it? For change, to, yeah. to measure it. And you measure it by having a look at these three areas, whether you have faith, what, what you do with your will, and how you respond to truth. Remember that? Okay. And then in the second talk, Corny introduced you to your resistances to change. You remember what those three resistances were, the primary three resistances? So, um, sorry, uh, Paige, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, if we go to Rachel and then down the front here and then up the back. Yep. Lack of faith in God and lack of faith in myself. Right. So there's the issues of faith, right? And then there was the issue of... Being overwhelmed, not being, feeling like you can cope with being overwhelmed. Right, being overwhelmed emotionally, not being able to cope with that or feeling or believing that you're not going to be able to cope with that. And then the third one was, so, so it was an overwhelm. And the last one, resistance to truth. And the last one was the resistance to truth, right. And in my talk, I was talking to people about measuring their desire by the way they use their time, their will, and their desire for truth, wasn't it? So again, it was about desire for truth. Did you really have one or, or not? And are you living in truth in your day-to-day -day life? Now, remember Corny asked you to move around. Remember that? And you had to get up and move around, and it's ho-hum, ho-hum, you know, we all move around, sit down, all, all in a different place. Do you know what? The majority of you were back in the same place you were before you moved around in terms of the distance from the front and the person that you're next to or with, right? You are basically in a very similar place, many of you. And this is one thing that you didn't notice, right? So, so what draws you to that group of people or that, or that location? Or These are all things that are all part of noticing yourself and what you do. Does that make sense? Allow yourself to notice yourself and what you do. Okay, and then Mary talked to you about what subject on the first day? If you, if she, she talked to you about what subject primarily? If we come down to Barb? She talked about love and how love governs the universe. She did, but that wasn't the main theme of her talk. That was the introduction of her talk. So, okay. 
Developing the will to love. Yes, so developing the will to love. And we, we first, she first focused on the importance of love in the whole universe. And then, and then the fact is that we lack an education in love, don't we? We just lack the education in love. Now, for the majority of you, the first day was well, everything's coping okay. Right? Then we get to the second day. What was the second day about? Can you remember? So, thanks, Ludi. Um, the facade self and the hurt self. Yeah, so it introduced the concept of looking at yourself and understanding yourself, didn't it? And then it introduced you to the three selves. So the introduction to it was the, about the real self, the facade self, and then the hurt self. What was the talk you found the most difficult to listen to on that day? If, if you're honest, right? So let's go back to Deidre. The facade self. Okay, so really struggled there. And remember, we were talking about the deconstruction process, which applies to the facade, but also applies to everything you're going to have to deconstruct. And, it was, and in that talk, most of you found it really difficult to understand the difference of, what, of the different stages. And also, most of you also started feeling some internal resistance and starting to get to the point where you felt a bit overloaded. So much so that, remember, we had to have a break for a couple of hours, right? And then Mary did the hurt self. Now, how did you feel about the hurt self talk in comparison to the facade? Did you notice that, Joanne? I just wait for the mic. Sorry. Yep. I found that very comforting. Yes. Okay. So, so this tells us that we're totally comfortable with feeling that we're all hurt. But we're not very comfortable at all at feeling that we have a facade. Right? Now, the only problem with that is most of your hurt is under the facade. So, you, so what you've been thinking as, uh, uh, that you've been feeling your hurt up to this point, you haven't been feeling your hurt because it's all under the facade and you've got to feel the facade before you can feel your hurt. Right? So this is a problem. We're resistive already to the layer that's on the top that we created or that our parents created and we don't want to face it. We judge it. And we basically want to ignore it, if we're honest with ourselves. And the amount of resistance that develops in the room when we start talking about a facade is pretty high. Okay. So now let's look at what happened yesterday. So what did we talk about yesterday? Basically, what's the subject yesterday? Eloisa, thanks. Addictions. Addictions, okay. And... Mary introduced you to the concept of how addictions work and all of you could really relate to that, couldn't you? But most of you could really relate to, yep, yeah, uh, this is a feeling, the compulsion feeling, you know, the desperation and all that kind of feeling. There's the feeling, I can identify that feeling, I've felt that feeling plenty of times before and then what happens when I get it met, oh, it's so uh, really nice but a little bit, you know, tainted but... It looks good enough anyway. And a lot of you are starting to say, like, oh, oh, yeah, no, I feel that it's really tainted. And, I feel... and I'm going, no, you don't. Honestly, I observe you in every interaction during the day that you're not tainted in the interaction. You're not feeling like, sleazy or any of those things. You're feeling, this is wonderful, right? And I'm going, where's this dishonesty coming from? Where is it coming from? Your facade. Right? The very thing that you were resisting the day before. Right? Okay, so Mary introduced you to the concept, which was the... It, it, there was that talk, wasn't there? And then, and then Corny came up and talked to you about recognising... Recognising... ..the addictions in, in relationships specifically. Now, I don't know about you, but all of you... You could feel from the audience, very open. Yeah I, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, isn't that quite... It's quite funny sometimes, right? And, and I can see that there, and I can see that feeling there. Yeah, I know that feeling there. I can feel that feeling there. And everyone was pretty open about that. And then Mary gets up and talks about the next subject, which was... Who, who would like to say? Susan? 
challenging addictions. Challenging the addiction. So she was giving you pointers to challenge the addiction, right? And where did you go? Where did you go? Most, most of you just went away and very resistive again, right? So much so that Mary couldn't even keep a place sometimes as to where she was. That's how much was coming from the audience, actually. Right? So, so what was the second talk that really challenged you and caused you to go away? It was this one. Challenging your addictions. Can you see a relationship? Which you got challenging our addictions is a like is an issue that we don't really want to come to terms with, and that's very much the same because all of our addictions or most of them are in the facade, right? So now we've got two talks that were the most challenging talks in terms of the audience, and that's when you got the most spirit influence actually during those times, right? So what does that tell us? If we're as a group, what does that tell us? Tells us, thanks Eloisa, if you want to. That we're all pretty fake and don't want to challenge any of it. Correct. That's what it basically tells us. We're all pretty fake and we don't want to challenge any of it, right? Yep. Yeah. And, and when we hear a talk talking about that, that's when we become the most resistive. All right? Now, your resistance is going to go up another level today if you're not careful. Because the subject that I'm going to raise with you is the subject that nobody wants to address in the world. In reality. Right? And it will help you process and go, and go through emotion if you come to terms with what we talk about today. But again, if you're not careful, you're going to go into a lot of resistance. And it's going to be quite difficult to talk to you about it. So my suggestion is... Have a look at the pattern here. Anything that's challenging you is actually something that you're shutting down towards. This is not a good pattern. That demonstrates what about your will? What does it demonstrate about your will collectively? Right? If we go to Felix and then down to Matthew. It, it demonstrates to the group, and I feel for me definitely as well, that I have a lack of desire to, to change. Yes. And to love, yeah. In particularly in these yeah. two areas. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so when we talk about the real self, everybody feels like, ah, oh, yeah, that's the bit I'm missing. Isn't that wonderful? I'm so open to talking about that. And when we talk about the hurt self, they say, yeah, we're all hurt. It's all terrible. Let's have some victim com commiseration together. Isn't it wonderful that we get all that? But when it starts talking about the facade, what facade? I'm not in facade, right? And then the same goes here when we start doing addictions. We, we, in Corny's talk, you're all going, yeah, I recognise that feeling. Yeah, I can feel that feeling. Yes. And honestly, if Corny had, had, had received all of the answers, you would have been going to nine o'clock at night talking to him about the feelings involved in recognising addictions because all of you recognise them, right? You were listing all the feelings off one after the other. Yes, it's this and that and this and that. And why, no problem at all. But then coming to challenging the addiction, it's like... Uh, we don't want to do that. Why would we want to do that? The addiction is the only time we get loved, right? Or loved, quotation marks, right? <laughs> and so this is what we've got to be careful of. You see, many of you um, have become like what I would classify as a person who picks and chooses the truth, depending on the level of resistance that you have. It reminds me of my early days when I was a kid. We used to go fruit picking, right? And I can just imagine many of you going fruit picking from an emotional perspective, right? And, and imagine you go up to the fruit, fruit, the owner of the orchard, and you say, I'm here to do some work. I really want to get into things. And he says, OK, what I want you to do is pick all the apricots. And you say, oh, I've never picked apricots before. Which ones do I pick? And he says to you, all the ripe ones, Right? And you say, what, what do you mean the right ones? What does that look like? Because I've never really seen an apricot, you know, from a, hanging from a tree before. So you go, he goes, well, all the ones that are bright orange, right, they're, they're ripe. And all the ones that are like just slightly off yellow and the green ones are all green. You go, okay, 
And then you go up and, and you go, these, these orange ones are a bit soft. And you go to yourself, oh, I, I don't think I would like to eat a soft right, apricot. So I, I'm not picking those. So what I'm going to do instead is I'll pick the ones that are just slide off green and tinging towards yellow. I'll eat those. So you pick all the ones that you would like to eat and you leave all the other ones on the tree. And that's what you do with truth. You pick all the ones you want to digest. Now, if your facade is fighting for itself and you're in your addictions, right, and you only pick the things that you want to digest, doesn't that tell you you're really only picking the things that don't challenge your facade and don't challenge your, your addictions? Are you going to make real progress towards God doing that? No, you're not. And you've got to get honest about that. If you're going to be selective with regard to what truths you hear, and you're going to ignore the ones you don't want to hear and just accept the ones you do want to hear, then it's only what you want to hear that you'll do anything about. And the only things at this stage that you really want to hear are things that feed your addictions and prop up your facade. So that's going to be a problem, isn't it? So all of the things you want to hear go, yes, that supports my facade, that supports my addiction, isn't that wonderful? But... Boy, we learnt some wonderful truths today. I was just so overjoyed to hear all of those things. Isn't it really good? And you go, well, what did you do about the other bits? Oh, no, no, you know, it's just AJ raving on or, you know, Mary raving on, you know, you know, whatever. Is really what we do inside of ourselves if we're honest. You ignore some of the biggest things in your life in preference to getting truths on some of the smallest things in your life. <laughs> right. And of course, the spirits with you are co-conspirators in this process. And you know why? Because they don't want you to challenge your facade. They don't want to challenge your addictions. That's what they feed from you with, from. They feed from your addictions. They feed from your facade. So they don't want you to do it. So you know what they do? You start hearing something that, that is challenging and... <laughs> Oh, I'm asleep all of a sudden. You know, that was really hard. I fought, had to fight, you know, to stay awake even in that place because there's no desire in them to even assist you to challenge your addictions. And there's no desire in you to do it. And so you just go away. It's a really convenient way of dealing with any problem. You just abscond, desert the place. So my body's still there, but nobody's home anymore, right? So these are patterns that you have that we need to, if you're really sincere, you will start addressing those patterns. You will want to address those patterns. Okay. So is there any questions about that that you would like to ask before I proceed with what we're going to talk about today? No? Nina? So in the moment that we observe ourselves getting sleepy, yep. in the past I've had a tendency to fight the sleepiness with my willpower. Yes, which doesn't work either, does it? No. So what would be a more constructive approach? I, I would think about the subject that's being presented to you. Mm -hmm. That's what I would do. Let me just finish writing, writing this up. I would think about the subject being presented to you and tell yourself that you don't want to hear it. Cool. There's the truth, and I'd write that down. I don't want to hear about the facade. I don't want to hear about addictions. Mm -hmm. What does that tell me? It tells me I'm probably in quite a few of them, and I just don't want to face them. So if, even if you just get that one truth out of that talk, and then you walk, get up and walk out, that's better than sitting there fighting off sleep and not, not understanding that one thing. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? No, it does, yeah. Yeah. It's far better to understand where you're at. Remember, the whole subject of the first day, really, was to help you understand where you're at right now. Right? And, and if you're going to sleep, you know where you're at. If, if a certain subject causes you to go to sleep, you know where you're at on that subject. 
You're in total denial, total resistance. That's where you're at. So write that down. I'm in total denial, total resistance of this subject. Of course, there might be the situation where it's just boring. <laughs> and I would question why you're sitting in the audience at all, if that's the case. But if, you, you, if it's something you want to change, and you're there because you want to change it, and then you go to sleep, then I would suggest you need to write down, there's my resistance, bang, I know where it is. And then it's about trying to do what Mary was suggesting to you the first day, developing the will to change that. Work through, on developing the will to change. Through seeing the sin of it. Well, there's a lot of ways you can develop the will. So, so you know, one way to develop the will is to develop faith. So have some faith in God and some faith in yourself. One way to develop the will is to look at the fear because the fear always prevents the operation of the will. So release some fear. Focus on the release of some fear. Uh, another way to develop the will is see the truth. So go and find some truth about the situation. There's all, there's all these different ways to develop your will. Remember Mary said your will's like a muscle. It's got to be used. You've got to do something. You've got to... And remember she made some suggestions during that talk that were really good. Suggestions like, you know, what do you feed yourself with every day? What do you drink every day? Do you drink in the lies of the world or do you feed yourself on truth? Do you, what do you do? You know, these are things you can do to encourage your will to develop. But, but only you can do it. No one else can do it for you. Vanessa? Um, so, AJ, if I'm crying about the fact I have no will... That's just a facade kind of thing. Like you and I had an, we sort of had an interaction last night and I went, walked away and I just realised I have no desire for truth. I just, you know, so I'm sort of thinking, well, why am I here? Well, no, go, go okay, I have no desire for truth. Why? See, see, when you go, why are you here, you're now judging yourself. Now, that's not going to help you, is it? Every time you judge yourself, you're attacking yourself. Right? You're, do you, does that get you anywhere? No, doesn't get you anywhere. You're far better. And, and the self-attack is an addiction, as Mary's pointed out to you many times. It's an addiction to help you avoid the analysis of what's really going on. And usually you know that it's fear that is underlying the, the problem. So, so why don't you want to hear truth? There's something you're afraid of. What are you afraid of? Be honest with yourself. Start looking at why the feelings inside of you that you feel when you're sitting with us or talking to me personally and you start feeling some feelings, what are the feelings? One of the feelings is you're afraid. So f feel that feeling. Well, well I, I just um, went into that addictive cycle. It was just so... It's like a perfect illustration of everything that you've spoken about yesterday. Yep. I, I pretty much just shat all over it. And so, That's okay. You so know, you went into the addiction, right? Yeah. And I wanted your approval. I wanted your attention. Correct. And, and did I give you any? No. No. I could feel you like you were repulsed and then I went into the... Well, I wasn't repulsed. I don't get repulsed when people do that. I just don't give you any. Yeah. You will feel that as a repulsion because you want the addiction met and any time it's not met, you think that's a repulsion. Yeah. So there you go. You go away and you go, oh, there. My, there's my interaction. I wanted daddy's approval, right? Daddy didn't give me any. There's my addiction, and I go away feeling like Daddy doesn't love me when actually that was the most loving thing he could have done. So, so what do I need to feel? I need to feel, firstly, the addiction I have and the belief that I have that actually me getting what I want is right. Mm -hmm. that's what, so that's what I would do, I'd go away and analyse that and, then I'd, and feel about that. And then I'd go, OK, what's the hurt underneath this? How do I feel right now? I feel rejected. Right? Now, probably in your childhood, there has been some rejection with regard to your father, right? And then you can start going, okay, maybe this is where I need to go, into that hurt child that has all of this rejection and everything inside of her. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I'm just you. giving you an example. No, thank you. Yeah. So when you go into self-punishment and say, oh, what's the point of me being here? You know, I just shat all over everything that we talked about yesterday. Well, I know a terrible person and, and all that. You get to avoid that entire other process. Isn't that wonderful? There's another addiction. <laughs> the addiction to avoid by going into a drama that, that you create in order to avoid. Yep. The self-punishment is a drama that you create to avoid the actual truth. 
So there's another addiction, two addictions in one two-minute interaction. Isn't this amazing? This is where you could go with it, right? Okay. Yep, thank you. Yeah. Alan, thanks. From what you've been saying, I'm guessing that um, the addictions that we chose to face and write about and all that sort of stuff are the easy ones. Exactly. They're the ones you now are aware or at least are intellectually aware of. What about all the ones you have no awareness of whatsoever? They're the ones with the strongest facade associated with them. They're the ones with the strongest denial right now that you have within you associated with them. They are most likely also going to be the ones that when you release them will have the most benefit to your life. Right? So this is where we need to get really personally honest. Now, it's not my responsibility or Mary's or Cornelius or anybody else's responsibility, even God's responsibility, to force you into exposing some of these addictions that you're not aware of. We talked about who's responsible for all of these things. Who's that? I'm responsible for me. I'm responsible. Right? Many of you still want to place responsibility on someone else rather than doing the personal work required to change. Right? Now, if I can give you a bit of feedback about the feedback sessions. I look at all of the things, and it's wonderful that you've all listed the different things up, and then I feel each of you and I go, actually, that's very interesting that you've raised that particular question because that's not the problem at all. That's not the main problem. Right? Now, for many of you who have put your name on the list to have some feedback, it's not the main problem at all that you're listing on that sheet. Right? Now, for some of you it is, but for some of you it isn't. And, and what, you're, what you're doing is you're listing an issue or a problem that you're comfortable with raising because you've already had some insight on that issue. Right? And also, you're already in a facade about the issue, so you think you already know a fair bit about the subject, and so you feel comfortable with raising it with me so we can have a talk about it. But, but sometimes the real big issues, like giant issues, they all just get skipped over. So what I'll be doing is I'm going through those uh, tables, selecting an issue in a person that I feel is sincere with the issue. Does that make sense? that the issue raised is the sincere issue that is actually wanting to be addressed. That's what we'll be doing with our feedback sessions. Okay. Any other questions that you'd like to ask before we move on to the new subject today? Oh, good eye. <laughs>